Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, this time it's time again for a uh, painting competition. So this is a painting competition that we have been running in the Netherlands. And it's all about just uh, getting some models done that you uh, have already uh, wanted to finish for a long time. Or maybe for a shorter time, but just getting stuff on the table basically. Uh, normally we have a theme. Uh, this time the theme was just uh, go wild on, on whatever you want. So it's it's basically a free theme. Uh, so you'll see that the entries also vary from very big models to very small ones. Um, and we really <laughs> look for the edges of the spectrum here uh, in terms of big models as well as small models. Um, so in just alphabetical order, order, I'll just go through the different um, the different submissions. Uh, I will put the link in the description um, of where you can vote for the for the different entries if you want to. But for now, let's look at the entries. Uh, so the first entry in alphabetical order is by Albert. Albert is painting his Beastman army. Um, in a previous painting uh, video I did, uh, we already discussed the Beast Lord of his, uh, who has a lovely tartan on his uh, on his clothing. This time we have a Gortach and a giant, um, and I think they've been um, done really well for the army. Um, so I really like uh, neat paint jobs um, that are well just really crisp. Uh, for Beastman this doesn't really work because well the, the nature of the, the army is quite savage and quite rough but I think um, he went for a really good middle of ground here um, with providing uh, a very neat base and then um, mudding it up a little bit uh, with some washes. Uh, I think it's it's a really cool set of figures um, with some um, improvisation going on, like the pigs and the, the pumpkins that you can see. Um, and I I think it's they are cool in the sense that they also feature the the lovely tartan. Um, if I were to give a little bit of advice, I would say that he could touch up a little bit more the the skin areas where he uh, put a wash over. Um, I think you could um, make the highlights a little bit more extreme to make the models pop out a little bit more um, rather than to just have, have normal skin. But uh, just these, these miniatures with huge amounts of skin, it's, it's really tough to get them uh, incredibly flashy on the table. Um, I once saw a Beastman art Army where, they, where the painter um, used a little bit of a trick by just giving tattoos all over the the surface of the models um, and that really helped to, to break up the, the large surfaces that you encounter on these models um, but generally just large surfaces of one specific color on any model it's it's just a, it's a difficulty uh, for a lot of uh, a lot of painters and I think that Albert did a really good job in, in uh, painting these two models the next entry in alphabetical order is mine. Um, so this time I have a model um, that I wanted to try some non-metallic metal on. Um, it's a model that um, I got from Daniel. Um, and I think it's a really neat model to, to go into my Dread Elf army. It's going to feature as a either a Temple Legate or a Dread Prince. Um, and I'm used to painting uh, gold NMM uh, for my Warriors of the Dark Gods army. And... With the gold NMM, it doesn't really matter if you're off that much um, because people are not that used to, to seeing gold, um, I believe. Um, but, well, at least in my opinion, it's, it doesn't matter if you screw up your NMM with gold that much as uh, it does with uh, silver or aluminium or any just transparent metal. Um, I think I still miss the mark a little bit here and there uh, on the NMM, um, especially with the smoothness, but that's mostly also in the pictures that you see it. And when the model is on the table, you, you see less of it. Um, I think I did a good job. Uh, I think it could have been better um, just in terms of smoothness. Um, also, um, on the scales, I could have spent a lot more energy uh, to make the transition smoother. Uh, but I think it turned out quite well. And we continue with the work of Daniel. So Daniel decided to paint uh, the old Nagash. Um, so this is a model that a lot of opinions uh, vary on. Either you love it or you hate it. Um, and there's not really anything in between. Um, and Daniel, as you can see, he's a bit of a painter that uh, doesn't follow the box art uh, or the proposed art by Games Workshop. Um, but he goes his own way. And I think this piece is, is one of his most iconic pieces um, up till now. 
Um, I think it's well done uh, to capture the soul of the model. Um, so it really gives you an, an, a fiery and energetic piece. Um, and another image of, of Nagash that we're not really used to uh, to see. I think it's well done in the sense of capturing the soul of, uh, of the piece. And yellow is a really tricky color to work with. Uh, just because the pigment usually in yellow is, is not as strong as in other colors. Um, and also because it's a lighter color, so it takes usually a lot of coats to uh, to get a full fiery vibe uh, to your yellow. And if you're working with thicker um, layers, then usually you run into the problem of, of getting really thick paint layers and losing detail in your piece. Um, so technically, um, in terms of, of uh, handling the paint, I think Daniel has done a really good job here um, of uh, still keeping these details in the staff, yet getting this this yellow um, to really bright, shine brightly uh, out of the piece. Composition, composition wise, I would say that I, I, well, the colors clash a bit too much for me. It's a bit too energetic and a little bit too over the top. But then again, Warhammer Fantasy is also sometimes about going over the tops. So all in all, I think it's a really good job uh, by Daniel. Next up, we have the work done by Iris. Uh, so this is some kind of Medusa Jin Lady um, Oriental piece. Um, I'm a little bit disappointed that the model doesn't feature a base or, or anything that uh, tells us the scale of the piece. So I'm just assuming that it's a 28 millimeter model. Um, and I think that um, it's it's really vivid model and the, the uh, composition here is, is done really well with the contrast between the cold, icy bottom of the piece and the uh, warm uh, backside of the cloak with still the interlinking uh, small leaf pattern uh, that links the piece together. Um, so composition wise I think it's a really great piece and the piece gets more fiery and, and more warm um, as you go to the front of the model and then it ends in the in the ball. Technically I do think that the orb could have been painted a little bit better than, than this but I, I wouldn't know myself how to um, how to paint an orb like this um, so <laughs> I'm just wild guessing here. And other than that I'm a little bit disappointed with the with the face of the miniature. Um, so the face of a miniature is, is usually what you you draw to first um, and this piece is a bit of an exception in that because it is also being distracted by the orb and the cloak on the back side. Uh, but once you look at the face, uh, you can see that the eyes, um, they look a little bit comically. Uh, the way to prevent this uh, from happening in painting is to give it a, a dark uh, undercoat and then painting the white only uh, within the dark base that you use there. Um, so that would be a tip for the next time. Um, and also the lips. I have painted a lot of Witch Elf lips by now. Um, and I found that, uh, well, there's also some, some internet guides about that. Uh, normally, if you take a dark brown base and you only paint the under lip, the color that you want the lip to appear, uh, then you're better off than, um, than painting the full lips because then you get this clown-esque or, or Barbie girl type of, um, of image. Uh, the last detail I want to want to point out is on the back of the cloak. You have this nice gradient going on with the with the reds in the in the big flowers, but once you look clo look closely, it actually seems there's only two colors used there, uh, maybe three. But I I like I would like the the gradient to be a little bit more smooth um, in the piece. So I think technically this this piece could use a little bit more uh, more attention. But in terms of composition, on first sight, this piece looks just really amazing. And I think it's it's a really good job and, and job to be proud of. The next entry on the list is going to be that one of Yaldert. Uh, so Yaldert painted, painted this scene uh, for his Undying Dynasties army. Uh, I think it's a unit filler, um, or it could also be uh, used as an Arg of Ages, possibly. Um, I think the piece in itself uh, has a nice composition of the two statues with a very mighty model in the center. Um, and I think the lines of the piece also work to, to uh, support this, this view. Um, and especially the columns on, on either side of the, of the model I, I really like with the glyphs and the, um, the shine coming from the glyphs. Uh, the piece itself, uh, the centerpiece of the of the work, I also like uh, the red and, and yellow 
the red and yellow that he used on this model um, they really complement each other and, and they the contrast between the model and the background is uh, clear to to make the model stand out and as far as i can tell he also um, used a little bit the trick of uh, making your model a little bit lighter than its surroundings to make it pop out so for example the golden bracelets and the, uh, the yellow on the model up up I have a feeling that it's a little bit lighter than the uh, uh, the surroundings, and also the red cloth has a bit more of a highlight than the cloths on the on the Anubis statues uh, behind. And this is also what you um, usually see with with um, high value pieces or uh, high skill pieces of um, of professional painters that the rider of a, of a rhythm monster is usually painted in a lighter hue than the the mount, and that is to draw your eye towards the uh, the rider uh, specifically. Um, I do find a little bit um, that the uh, the clothes of the Anubis statues are a bit lacking um, in terms of definition. Um, so that could have used a little bit more attention and generally I think he could have gone a little bit uh, further with the highlights and also with the highlights on on the gold uh, the gold rims of the uh, of the um, the pillars uh, but I think it's it's a good piece it's a nice constructed piece um, I don't know uh, where this model is from um, I don't know if it's just one piece or if it's a contraption he made by himself but I, I think the composition is great and I think this is definitely one of the one of the top contenders for the uh, um, for the competition then we go to this Orion model. Uh, it has been painted by Josse, and then, well, in the introduction, I mentioned that we went from really, really big models to really, really small models. <laughs> this is definitely the really, really small model. Um, as you can see from the pictures, it has a little bit less detail in the paint job than the other um, contenders so far. Uh, this is also due to the fact that it's just a really small model. Um, and the smaller the model gets, uh, I feel like the lighter colors uh, you have to use to make detail pop out. Uh, so it's a little bit of a shame for me, uh, to me, that uh, the horse part of the body is so dark as it is. Because if you look at it from afar, then only the only thing you see is, is basically the torso. Um, yet still, I think that he did a really great job, um, especially here in this case on the face. Uh, the eyes, they are impossible to paint if you paint them normally and he found an incredibly good solution in uh, first doing a light uh, blue um, background color and then um, using this white spot to to make um, to make it look as if the eyes are glowing and as you can see from the euro coin on the left um, this is definitely a small model uh, so yeah great effort on that um, one thing I find still a little bit um, sad is that uh, the horns also don't really show that much complexity. Um, so I would have liked to have a little bit more highlighting there, also a little bit of more um, highlighting on the skin perhaps. Um, I don't know how small exactly this model is in, this, in terms of, of handling it and, and uh, going about painting it, but I think it, it could have just gotten uh, just one more uh, level of, of detailing um, than it has. Still, it's a good entry. Um, and also the flowers on the base and the stump and the, the, the small rocks. Um, they really the complement the model and I, I like this model. Um, I think it's going to be a, a nice standout model in any uh, Warmaster uh, scale um, Wood Elf Army. The next model is going to be the Glotkin by Kuhn. Um, so this model is huge. It's it's really huge, and it has a level of detail that is the same as as any of the other models in this competition. Um, so just the entire surface area of the model being so big, um, it's getting this painted to a standard that is equivalent um, to uh, the other competition pieces is insane. Um, and I think Kuhn did a really good job on this model um, and the amount of effort that went into it. Um, we could track it basically by uh, the messages in our uh, painting competition app group. Um, and I think 
yeah, once again, there's, there's so many strong contenders in this uh, competition. Um, and yeah, this this model, this looks gruesome. It's supposed to look gruesome. So Kuhn did really a good job here. Um, I, I can't really say that I find all of it really pretty, but that's also the um, the vibe of the model that, that you have to go for. Um, so in the top left here in this picture, you can see some eyes. You can see that the, the no, well, these eyes, they are just really well painted. Uh, there's a couple of layers there, there's some glazing, there's some some light uh, reflection on the eye. Um, and I think it's also been done in, in the, the right spot. Um, now, otherwise, we have some more pictures. Um, you know, you can see just the amount of detail that is present in this model. It's just insane. <laughs> and, yeah, it's it's this is I think one model that I will never paint myself. Um, so I saw the progress of uh, Kuhn, and every single time he was just showing more of this um, this extreme detail on this piece. <laughs> At some point, I was just like, when is is it ever gonna stop on this model? It's it's such a big model. It's it's really a big undertaking to to paint this piece. I'm very happy for Kuhn that he um, he got it all painted, um, but I don't think I will end up painting it myself. Um, things to highlight on this piece, I think the skin tones that we that Kuhn used, uh, you can see them a bit more clearly on the top right. I think that is really well done. Um, so just the different colors of, of purple, blue, of, of red, uh, just all coming together in in one model, just in the skin tone. Um, I think that is that is really good. Um, I also uh, earlier mentioned the skin tone. Um, now this is a Nurgle model, so it's supposed to look a bit pestilent and, and decayed. Um, so in that sense, you have a little bit more liberty in, in choosing your different flesh tones. Um, I think he did it really well here. Um, if I could give some criticism, um, well, the, the details, they have not gotten as much um, attention as with some of the other entries but then again there's so much detail in this model um, so what I'm alluding to is for example the skulls in the top right, top left corner you can see that it's a little bit rough on the edges um, <laughs> just to, to make this piece um, stand out at every single angle and, and be masterfully painted at every single angle it's, it's just such a big effort. Um, so I think Kuhn can already be really, really happy with with what he achieved. Um, if he has some spare time and some spare motivation to take it just to the next level, then um, that could be possible. But <laughs> as I said already, I'm not going to be able to, to finish this piece myself just for the lack of motivation at some point um, with the model this huge and that much detail. Next is going to be the entry of Lars. Uh, so this is a conversion, I believe, for uh, an anvil um, for the dwarves. Uh, so this is instead a cooking stove where some dwarves are grilling a, uh, a pork. And there's one drunk dwarf who's just uh, not really paying a lot of attention anymore. Um, I think this piece is, um, is nicely painted. Um, so the barrel, for example, um, especially, I, I think it's really neatly done. Um, there's some wood structure on the pole and that on the upright pole, and unfortunately we don't get a lot of detailed shots of of the dwarfs themselves. Um, but I I'm sure that they're also uh, just quite crisply painted. Uh, the only thing that I do find a little bit of shame is that uh, the composition um, in my um, from from what I see could be a little bit better. Um, so. I would probably have preferred it that the, uh, the um, dwarf with the grey beard would have also been turned towards the uh, uh, the hawk, making it a little bit more of a centerpiece within the work, um, rather than just a random kind of collection of, of uh, pieces. Uh, so to me, right now there's uh, just a little uh, scene uh, with the chef turning the pork, another scene of... of um, this other chef being turned away from the pork and then uh, the scene of, of just some random rubble with the drunken dwarf there. Um, but it's not really cohesive um, in my experience. So that could be a, uh, a bit improved in my opinion. 
Um, yet still, it's it's a very neat piece. It's a very creative piece, very original to to use this as an anvil rather than an anvil. Um, and I think it also shows that even if you have some old models, um, some people extremely appreciate old models like this. Um, and for those that don't appreciate them um, just on a 20 millimeter square base, you can do some kind of funky stuff with this, where you where you take some uh, some models that are less exciting than the newest releases, maybe, and use them in your own compositions uh, just to spice up um, the scenes a little bit. I think it's good. Uh, I think it's a cool diorama in the end. Next up is the work by Levy. He painted Frodo and Sam. Uh, these miniatures are in size a little bit in between 28 standard uh, millimeter uh, miniatures and the very tiny one is, uh, is painted by uh, uh, by Osse. Um So I think it's also a little bit harder than the 28 millimeter um, figures uh, in terms of detail. And I think he did a good job in um, in just, well, painting up the, the miniatures. Uh, so there's nice shadows in the cloaks. Um, there's there's nice expressions on the faces. I think the the left eye, especially of Frodo, could have used a little bit more attention. Because uh, there's a corner in the eye where it it seems to me like there should be a little bit more black rather than, uh, than the white there is now. But I understand that these faces, they are also smaller than... Uh, than the normal 28 millimeter uh, faces, so probably it was quite a struggle to, to get this achievement already. <laughs> um, I also painted some Flames of War miniatures, and these are what are they? They are 15 millimeter infantry. I tried to, to paint the eyes on those, and that's all. So <laughs> just I, I managed in, in some cases, but in some cases I just gave up because it was such a struggle. Um, there's um, just one thing that I want to highlight, which is the uh, the red um, uh, jacket of, of Frodo and the, the yellow uh, undershirts of, of Frodo and Sam. I think these could have used a little bit more shading, um, especially on, on models that are so tiny, you have to go a little bit more extreme, I feel, um, on shading in dark recesses to make the light colors uh, stand out a bit more. Um, so, for example, under uh, Frodo's left arm, in the left picture, you can see that there's a clear shadow. Um, yet on the right picture, you can see that it's painted green, and it's it's the same green as on the outside of the of the cloak. And and normally, from a material standpoint, that makes sense. But if you look at a at a coat or something, and and someone is wearing a red coat, on the inside of the red coat, you'll hardly find any red color because there's no light coming out from there. Um, so. Generally, I paint always uh, the inside of my cloaks right under the armpit, just black or, or really close to black, um, because this makes this makes the model a bit more vibrant in, in um, how it's painted up. So, for next time, Levi, if you ever paint these models again, um, I would consider just just uh, contrasting a little bit stronger in terms of highlights and, and dark tones. Yet still, you did a good job on uh, painting up these uh, these tiny buggers. Then we get to the Cyclops of Martijn. Um So this is also for a Beast Hurts army. I find these pictures a little bit um, misleading because I don't really know if the uh, the underside of the arms are as heavily shaded as is implied by the pictures. Um, so it could have been that he used um, quite a strong um, um, source of light uh, that illuminates the model from above. And that clouds a little bit uh, the... Um, the paint job itself, or he just painted it like this, and then it's amazing. <laughs> um, he also asked for a little bit of advice on uh, the, the painting competition uh, app group about the hair on the back, and I think he did. Uh, he nearly did the, the perfect job on this. I think the the shading um, of the the, um, the roots of the hair on the back could have extended a little bit more to make it just a bit more dark. Um, and if you don't really want to, to make the model pop, you can highlight the edges, um, the, the outmost hairs, even a bit stronger to, to really make it contrast with, uh, with the baseline of the, of the hairs. Um, I like the, the color transitions in skin tones. Um, so I talked about this earlier with the first model already, um, that it's difficult to, to make large patches of skin interesting. 
Um, as you can see in the middle picture, Martijn did use a different skin tone for the mouth as he did for the face and for the uh, the legs and the, the belly. I think this really helps to um, to to shift the model away from being colored in one color all over and then um, um, then highlighted with with some different uh, colors. Um, yeah, so I, I do like that. I like that he put a statue in the uh, the arm instead of the usual weapon. I believe that um, this model has, um, and I think that the the skull in the front, the shading on this this part is amazing. Um, I would have liked to to have a little bit more detailed shots of of um, some parts of this model, um, but well, as far as I can see, this has just been painted to a really great standard. Um, and on a big model like this, it's it's easy to have some areas where you fuck up um, the model, but doesn't seem like this happened in this case. So great effort, Martijn, and um, maybe you can teach me someday how to paint this up. <laughs> the next contender is going to be Mick. Mick has these uh, archers or rangers um, together with a unit champion and. He went for a really exciting color scheme, um, combining the, the light blue with the yellow. Um, I think it's an interesting scheme. Um, I don't know if I would want an entire army for this uh, in this scheme, uh, but I think it's it's a really cool scheme to use uh, if you um, have a couple of different uh, color schemes in your army, like a Dogs of War type Empire of Sun style army, uh, where you have all kinds of small regiments. Uh, that each have their own um, um, uniforms. I think this is a really cool scheme because it's it's not that usual to see. Um, it does combine a very cold blue with a with a kind of warm um, yellow. So it and it's it's only on the highlights. So it it feels a little bit weird to me. Um, but it's. I think in an army full of these these kind of color schemes, it, it, it's going to work really well. Um, and the, the model in the middle, uh, the unit champion, um, she, I, I like how he uh, how he incorporated the color scheme of the unit on this model. Um, it's such a simple model, yet still just the the single blue line on her on her dress and the, the blonde hair make her fit in with the rest of the unit. Um, and I think that's a really nice touch. Uh, otherwise, I think that uh, the basing is quite interesting, um, even though I don't really know what it's supposed to be, but it seems to be some some icy landscape um, with some some patches of, of snow. Yeah, I think this is going to be a cool army once it's, uh, once it's fully completed. Um, I'm interested to see the results. Next up is Paul's Bloodthirster, so he painted a very fiery guy and uh, this guy is really energetic um, and really vibrant in, in its appearance. Uh, I think it's a little bit of a shame that he added the, the big base to it because it's painted to, in my opinion, way worse than the, than the Bloodthirster itself. <laughs> so it just devaluates the, the, the value of the piece, um, but that might ju be just my opinion. Um, I think the piece itself is uh, painted um, quite vividly and, and it really brings the, the tone of the piece um, to the viewer. I like how the wings have got a lot of attention and, and have really vibrant colors in them. Um, I do feel, however, that usually um, it's better to draw the focus of your viewer to the, the bulk of the model rather than to the wings. Uh, so I don't know if it's, uh, if it's the right call. Uh, to do for this model because it does draw away a lot of attention from the model itself. Uh, what I usually do myself with, uh, I have an army where I where I painted quite a lot of fire and also fire on wings or uh, flames on wings um, and then I give it a final dry brush, a very light dry brush with uh, with just some black paint uh, to dull down the, the wings and make them even more fiery because the flames are, are really random. It's a big step to take because there's a lot of effort that went into these type of wings and then just to try brush it over with a black. It feels really, really crap at the start. And then once you pull through, for me, it's it's really valuable to do it. Um, 
yet I can imagine that some people are a bit hesitant to, to follow this procedure. Uh, otherwise, I like that he did not only use um, reds and oranges in this piece. Um, the green lash certainly stands out from the rest of the piece. But I don't know if, if green was actually the right color to use here. Um, maybe I would have gone for, for either a purple or something towards the blue. I think purple would fit better with the piece, but the green is a bit of too much of a contrast uh, for my likes. All in all, in the end, it's an impressive model. Um, and I think Paul can be really proud of what he did. This is Rainier's um, Nurgle slug. <laughs> so it's a slug being ridden by a very fat rider. Um, he was really chill at, uh, at doing his job. Um, and I think uh, this uh, model, uh, well, we had an earlier model um, based on the Nurgle God. Um, that was the Glotkin. Um, this one is a little bit more more neatly uh, painted, whilst the other one was a bit more gruesome and, and a bit more messy. Um, they are both uh, sides of the same coin in the sense that they can give some very impressive looking models. Um, for my preference, I, I think if I were to, to uh, vote between the two, um, I would put this one a little bit higher than the other one just because I uh, like cleanliness in the figure, but then again, uh, the Nurgle aesthetic of uh, models should be gruesome and, and uh, sluggy and, and rugged and, and disgusting. So both paint jobs are, are really good. Um, and yeah, this one is, I think this one just speaks a little bit more to me uh, because yeah, it's, it's just a bit cleaner. <clears throat> I like the amount of detail that is present in the model. Um, I like um, how the rider is um, just a little bit different from the mount. Yeah, overall I think it's a, it's a really nice model. Um, I don't know if it's a conversion or not. I'm, I'm not that up to date with the latest uh, Nurgle stuff that uh, Games Workshop has produced. If it's a conversion, then I think it's it's really nicely done because I can't imagine that it's, this is uh, not just a plastic kit released by Games Workshop. Um, and the amount of detail uh, on the model and the attention that the detail has gotten um, is really astounding. Um, it's certainly a model to be proud of. Then we go to the black gobo painted by uh, Sebastian. In this case, it's actually more of a red gobo than a black gobo, but here we are. Um, so this is a Christmas special uh, released by Games Workshop. Um, it's a really charismatic piece and it's also been painted to a really high standard, I believe. Um, with, or at least I, I find that it's, this is one of the neatest paint jobs, um, in the entire collection. And, well, as I've explained by now, I really like neat paint jobs. Um, even though this, the neatness doesn't necessarily mean that you just paint one specific thing, one specific color. Uh, but if you look at the box, the strong box on the bottom left, you can see, for example, that there is some highlighting being done. Um, but it's not using uh, colors that are too strong, um, that, are, uh, that differ too much uh, from each other, that it really pops out as, as being strongly highlighted. Um, it's just that this is just how a green box looks if you, if you put it somewhere. Uh, or at least closer to the reality than... Uh, than some other pieces uh, have demonstrated before. And yeah, I think um, you can most clearly see it in this case, actually on the loincloth uh, for this model, which is the thing for the model that stands out the least in the entire piece, I think. Um, but the shading in this is, is also just well done um, with a very dark shading in the in the part where uh, where it actually has some shadow, a lighter shading in the parts where it doesn't have that strong of a shadow, but then the, just the highlights, um, they are equally strong in the in the equally elevated um, pieces. And also on the on the pocket um, of the coat, you can see some very very skillful highlighting on this one. Um, I like the the aesthetic of the gun. I like the returning. Um, Aesthetics, the returning designs uh, of this candy cane Christmas um, um, print, that it also returns um, in the inside of the uh, of the cloak. 
I think he could have used the same print again on the on the left leg of the gobbo, um, just to make it a little bit more exciting. Um, but then again, the green of the goblin also contrasts very nicely with uh, with the red and white of the cloak. Um, I think in general, this is yeah, this is for me really one of the strong contenders of the competition um, because it's it's just such a simple model, but he. He manages to clean it so nicely and, and still put so much uh, technique, it seems, um, into the model. Um, and also, if you play close attention to the to the Christmas balls, uh, so the one in his ear and the one hanging on the twig, um, I asked about how he did this, and he, he said that it was just a metallic paint covered with some, uh, some color. And I think that is a really smart way uh, of painting these Christmas balls because if you want to put the highlight in the correct place then it's going to be really a struggle to, to get the color right um, and on pictures this just looks marvelous it's going to look marvelous from any angle um, yeah so I think this is a really strong contender so well done uh, Sebastian the last contender of this competition is going to be Stein with his uh, Cyclops so this is a bit of a smaller Cyclops uh, I believe he's intending to use it as a giant, um, and I think it's a cool model to do so. Um, once again, we have a model with quite a lot of uh, of skin uh, showing. Um, he did use a transition between different type of types of skill, skin tones for the skin, um, with a really grey um, backside of the of the model and a, a lighter front side of the model. Um, it's a bit of a weird model in that sense, uh, because I could imagine it a bit of a, of a feral beast, and then you would expect um, uh, some kind of structure like um, uh, some animals have, where they have a very light underbelly and then the dark um, the dark hair on the back, um, mostly to provide some, some camouflage, I guess. Um, and I, I think he tried to mimic that, uh, but then in... in in that sense, I think he should have gone a little bit um, further in, in darkening the uh, the edges around uh, around the belly and also the feet. Um, so for me, right now, the feet they just seem a little bit out of sync with the rest of the model. Like if you have a model with uh, with a grey uh, or close to grey skin tone, then um, I would expect uh, the legs, at least, or um, just part of the feet, to also have a little bit of this uh, this influence in it. Um, other than that, I think it's a piece that um, has been uh, composed really well, um, and also uh, that the idea is, is really good um, of making this model that has a, a grey skin tone, basically, um, but then gets um, a different skin tone, um, as you go towards the belly and, and the front of the face. This this really accentuates the feeling of having a, a monster human hybrid rather than uh, something that's clearly really close to being a human um, or something that's really feral and, and really far away from uh, from being a human. So it it complements or it, it uh, combines these two um, varieties of of, um, of creature and it encapsulates the, the conversion of a of a humanoid into a, a bit of a more feral beast. So that is a that's an aspect that I that I really like about this piece. Um, areas where it could improve, um, yeah, it's a bit of a shame that uh, one of the the prime shots in the uh, in the collection of uh, pictures is the shot of the right um, upper chest, where you can see a very strong. Uh, transition going from a light brown to the skin color um, he could have meddled down this uh, the transition a little bit more um, and also the feet they could have gotten a little bit more um, more gradient work uh, shadowing highlighting into them um, so I think it, it generally the piece could have used a little bit more uh, more shading and highlighting um, it's also a common practice with models like this uh, to keep the underside of the model um, just way darker than, than the top of the model and this is I think this is something that you could also um, have very effectively used on, on this model where you really want your viewer to, to focus on the face it is a cyclops, the special thing is that he only has one eye um, so if you can draw your uh, your viewer away from the rest of the model 
uh, you can get a quick paint, paint job done uh, with just quite dark colors on the feet uh, draw away the attention just draw the attention to the face and uh, to the belly and the, the upper chest a little bit and then you're gonna just have a great looking model um, just painted in, in quite a short quantity of time to be honest um, I think it's a it's a model that got quite some some good effort into it um, I think you could take it to a, a little bit of a higher level uh, without too much extra effort um, and it would be worth it um, but all in all it's it's definitely also a model to be proud of um, and I would gladly put it in one of my own armies if I had the chance <laughs> With that, we have reached the final contender uh, for the mini painting competition. I think in general, the level uh, of the entries uh, this time is really high and um, maybe even higher than, than uh, some of the previous editions we had. Um, I think it also um, gives you an, a view of, of how other people uh, look at the pieces and, and gives you some creative juices that uh, start flowing. Um, and there's, there's in some way, there's so much contrast between the different entries, but then on the other way, um, there's so much um, similarities um, between uh, some different techniques that are being used also, um, but just in different ways. So this this really helps me also personally to uh, to understand a bit more how I, I should improve my own painting. Um, and I hope that uh, for you guys, this maybe is also a bit of an inspiration of, of how to improve your painting. Um, and just to as an enjoyment um, of the hobby. So in the end, we have a lot of uh, pretty pictures um, that we got, um, and I think we could all be just really happy with what we have achieved this time. Um, yeah, the next round of the mini paint competition, I I don't know what we are going to paint, uh, but it's definitely going to be a blast. Uh, we have been talking a little bit in the app group about maybe using one box set, sending everyone a single model out of that box set, and see what we uh, what we come up with then. Uh, but anyway, it's going to be exciting, and I'm really excited to to uh, do a video about the next iteration of this uh, painting competition. Thank you for watching, and see you the next time.